Thanks, Dan. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll start with saying that I'm uh, horrified, I'm irritated, I'm angry with the scenes witnessed at Amy Park uh, last night. We have a case of some individuals, I will not refer to them as fans of football, I'll refer to them as individuals who have confronted and uh, attacked a player and a match official. We've had individuals who have willfully uh, destructed LED. We've had individuals who have uh, invaded the pitch. Um, we've had flares that have been thrown and consequently a match in Australian football has been abandoned due to the integrity of the match. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the role of Football Australia because we are in a new governance model and I think it is important to understand what the role of Football Australia is. Um, Football Australia no longer operates the A-League, men's or women's, but it does regulate and govern the league. And it's important to understand our role in this new governance model. This is good thing because we don't have a commercial interest in the outcome of issues such as the one we're facing. We're an independent regulator and we can look at this issue, we can look at the APL and the respective clubs in an independent way. Um, as the regulator of the A-Leagues, we have been in touch overnight with the Victorian Police. Uh, we have been in touch with the respective governments, both at federal and also state level. We have been in touch with the APL, with the clubs. Uh, and I've personally spoken with both Tommy uh, and Alex as well, who are right in the centre of the pitch invasion, who I'm happy to report um, are, are healthy, but they are shaken up by the events that occurred last night. What we can tell you right now is that an investigation has been opened and we're looking at three separate buckets of investigation. The first is what happens with the game last night, what happens with the result. Um, does it get uh, abandoned and not played again? Does it get played again? This is the first investigation it will be to determine what the outcome of last night's match will now be since it was abandoned before the final whistle. That is the first uh, focus of the investigation. The second will be a show cause uh, process that will be opened uh, with Melbourne Victory and they will be receiving a show cause letter uh, as soon as possible. Um, that will not close the door to a show cause letter to Melbourne City. Um, at this point in time, we won't be uh, sending a show cause letter to Melbourne City because we haven't yet uh, come across evidence that would support us doing so. And the third focus of the investigation will be against uh, the individuals who we are seeking to uh, to name, we're seeking to identify, and we're seeking to sanction individuals. Um, what I can say in regards to all three focuses of this investigation, uh, just as Football Australia showed um, with the way we dealt with the Australia Cup final, um, we will be moving swiftly and we will be taking the strongest sanctions that are available to Football Australia. I'd like to say in closing that um, we are a sport with a massive ground swell. We've seen um, how big our sport is becoming uh, just recently with the World Cup campaign, the Socceroos. We know that our sport will continue to grow and be at its strongest point leading into the Women's World Cup in July this year. This pitch invasion, I want to be clear about this, it has nothing to do with the grand, groundswell and the rising of our game. The parent that takes their child uh, to grassroots football in Brisbane or the young boy who plays in our elite pathways in Perth or the 40 year old woman who plays um, amateur football in Sydney or the fans who peacefully protested in Central Coast Mariners 
uh, in, in the Wellington game and Newcastle game, all the other two million people across the sport who love and support our game. This is not about them. It has nothing to do with them. It has nothing to do with the two million people who love and support our game week in, week out. This is an element that goes beyond football. It's an element that infiltrates our game and that really try to ruin it for the two million people who love our sport. And it's those people that we will be targeting in this investigation and who we will weed out of the sport. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, James. As always, if you would like to ask a question, please use the raise your hand function. If you have some issues with that raise your hand function, you can message me privately on the chat. First of all, Joey Lynch. Um, thanks, Anne. Um, hi, James. Uh, regarding this investigation, um, Melbourne Victory already had received a show course notice last year for the Josh Cavallo incident. They've also been sanctioned on a number of occasions by Football Victoria for incidents at an NPL level in the past years. Will that prior history be taken into account when sanctions are handed down? And secondly, does the club still have any suspended sanctions hanging over its head from that Cavallo incident? Uh, Joey, um, it, at law, we, we call this aggravation um, when, when these things happen on more than one occasion. Um, there have been other occasions. We know that, that they, they are facts and it will be an aggregating uh, factor as we work through the show cause uh, process. Um, there's no other suspended um, 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 disciplinary action that, that I'm aware of. But what I will say is we'll be working through that um, um, today. We've already started working on the show course process as of late last night, and we will be um, moving forward uh, as quickly and as swiftly as possible to finalise it, because it's important that we um, get ahead of this issue as a sport. Thanks, Joey. We'll just be going with one question for the moment until we um, uh, un undertake all questions. Uh, Peter Rolfe. Yeah, well, thanks for your time. We'll have a few questions as well, but it's in the first instance with the show cause notice that Victory are now going to present, will they be suspended from, from playing while that's being investigated? They've obviously got a game coming on Boxing Day against Western United, which is another all-Victorian fixture. So will they be free to play? Or will they be suspended while this goes on? Um, I, Peter, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer not to comment on the outcome uh, of that disciplinary process. Uh, we, we need to go through the process. Um, what I can say is that we'll look at the facts, we'll look at it objectively, and we will take uh, a decision that we believe is in the overall best interest of the game. But I'd prefer not to comment on the specifics of the outcome because we've got to go through that, that process first. Uh Fair enough, though. Could I, could I just quickly follow up? Though? Do you think it's safe to be playing a game in, that, in these circumstances, given what we've seen last night? Foot, football is, is very safe. Uh, Two million people play it uh, week in, week out. Um, we saw in all the other A-League matches that were played over the weekend, um, peaceful protests, and, and that's OK. Fans have um, uh, are OK to express their views in, in a peaceful way, but the way that some individuals conducted themselves at the Melbourne Victory game um, is not acceptable. And I think that that is specific um, to that match. Um, I don't think that it is a reflection on the broader game. Um, again, we're the biggest sport in the country in terms of participants. This does not happen in local football. It doesn't happen at national team level. It doesn't happen uh, at the NPL level, what we saw last night. Um, and it hasn't happened in the other A-League games. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. We'll come back to you if there's more time. Samantha Lewis. Thanks, Anne. Uh, James, this incident didn't happen in a vacuum. The wider context of the past week undoubtedly played a part in all of this. Um, you said in the Canberra Times earlier this week that you only found out about the grand final decision on Sunday. However, Football Australia has a representative on the APL board who must have known that these negotiations were taking place. So when did FA know about the idea to sell the grand finals to Sydney? And why was the so-called good of the game golden share not brought to bear on a decision that's ultimately done an incredible amount of damage to the sport? Yeah. 
Um, Sam, the, the first point is Football Australia was informed about the decision the Sunday evening before it was communicated. I did receive a phone call um, from Danny Townsend about that. That was the first time myself and the FA board, who was subsequently informed about it, um, were made aware of, of that decision. Um, I think we just need to be a little bit specific with what the good of the game share means. And that goes back to roles responsibilities. The league is a subordinate league. It, it sits under the umbrella of Football Australia. We regulate and we govern it. What Football Australia does not do is we do not run the business of the APL and we do not run the event of the APL. That is what the league does. The league is responsible for business decisions and it is responsible for the event itself. Our role are on issues like disciplinary matters, which is what we're talking about today. Our role is on the domestic match calendar, for example, which is when the season starts and when it ends. Our role is in regard to ethics proceedings if there was ever a corruption case. Um, our role is in regards to transfer systems and club licensing systems and player um, uh, movement regulations. That is the role of a regulator. It's not to get involved in business decisions. Um, so that that is um, how the, the, the governance uh, works. And our ability to intervene and enter this issue starts with the behaviour, the unacceptable behaviour from last night. And, and now we will be entering um, this, this, this issue through the door of unacceptable behaviour of certain individuals that occurred in the match last night. Thank you. Lachlan Liam. Lachlan Leeming. What, you got me now? Excellent. Now, thank you. Uh, excellent. Um, James, I just wanted to ask, in terms of these investigations that are taking place, is there any chance Tom Glover could face disciplinary action himself for throwing a flare at the start? Um, look, I, I, don't, I, I, I try not to get into the, the, the outcome, Lachlan, uh, similar to the question that Peter uh, asked a little bit before. Um, we, we've been working on this since last night. I think our record speaks for itself. Um, we move quickly on the Australia Cup issue. We will move quickly on this. Um, we will be uh, issuing show cause letters, but also decisions uh, at lightning speed. I, I, I just am a little bit uh, uncomfortable with talking about what I think um, an outcome could be for anyone involved um, in, in this issue last night, simply because we need to let the process determine the outcome and we've only just started that process so, so sorry if i could just follow that up just just to be clear then with the entire incident including the the flare throwing by uh tom glover at the start it'll all be part of this broad uh investigation is that correct it it, it will from the moment uh that a flare enters field is the the, the moment that we can see at this stage that triggers the whole event. Um, so we, we will be looking at it and we'll be looking at it fairly and objectively and we'll be moving swiftly on it. Thanks Lachlan. Dan Welsh. G'day James, Dan at Sydney Morning Herald. Hi, Dan. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to ask who's responsible for organising security at these games and how do flares and these individuals keep getting in and these incidents happening? The, the, the event and the security of the event, Dan, is a, a matter for the competition administrator, which is the APL. Um, that is a question that would need to be uh, directed. But there is an issue um, with flares entering stadiums um, that I think we do need to, to look at. Thank you. Um, Victor Walt Waters. Hi, James. Victor here from Television New Zealand. Uh, look, you're hosting a World Cup with New Zealand next year. I guess, what do you say to your New Zealand partners and, you know, the Wellington Phoenix about this incident and, and what, you know, repercussions that could have for football here too? I, I, I would say this matter doesn't reflect the, the, the broader game. We saw in Melbourne at Fed Square um, thousands and thousands of great football fans that came together to support um, the Socceroos. We saw this in, in other cities around uh, Australia, Sydney, 
Brisbane and, and so on and so forth. These are fans and these fans cannot be branded um, or painted with the same brush as those individuals that invaded the pitch last night. These are two separate um, groups. Um, we have fans and then we have these individuals. Um, I'm not worried at all about hosting the Women's World Cup. I think that is the biggest opportunity for the sport. And what we will see is uh, two big bookends for the sport with the Men's World Cup um, having just completed Australia playing a key role. And then we're going to see another seven months um, of growth across the broader game from grassroots football to elite pathways to national teams to top tier leagues as a result of having a men's world cup leading into the women's world cup. Um, so that would be my message. Thanks Victor. Moving on to Luke Doherty. Hi James, uh, Luke here at Fox Sports News. Thanks for your time. Um, just wondering, I know that the APL has obviously the administrators you've outlined of the, of the competition but, and but your remit at FA is also national teams, um, which we know and we've seen how strong A-League, um, given the past World Cup campaign, feeds into strong national teams. And just whether um, your take on the, the last week, which although fans have the right to protest, is obviously a not great look for flow on effects and marketing and broadcast and all the rest, whether you have any concerns moving forward of the way this whole thing has been handled and the outcome we have seen on the A-League's flow on effect to impacting national teams. Sure. So, Luke, I think the first point is um, there is no justification um, for the behaviour that we saw last night. I don't care about, you know, um, people who think that this decision about the grand final was good or bad. That is um, not a reason for what happened last night. And anyone that says that that is justified because of a decision to move the final to Sydney um, in my view, is is completely out of touch. Um, what I will say about the decision um, is the league uh, needs to be a provider and a developer of playing talent um, for our national teams. It is the key structure in Australian football. Of course, we're talking about pathways and second tiers that Football Australia will, will set up that will also contribute to that. But the league is the biggest provider for talent for our national teams. As a consequence, they do need to grow the economy of the league, but at the same time, um, they need to, to communicate um, with the fans and ensure that the fans are always part of um, the thinking when they take decisions. So there clearly um, is an issue where we, we, we've seen that over the past week. Um, we are supportive of a resolution um, very, very quickly, and we're uh, happy to play our part and support um, the APL on communicating with fans and bring the fans back together because ultimately fans are core, fans are the core um, part of the league. Thank you. Vince Rigari, followed by Damien McCartney. Hi, James. Um, hey, Vince. Similar question. Do you think the APL are doing a good job of administering the A-League? Because two weeks ago, the Socceroos were in Qatar and pushed Argentina all the way in around a 16 game. And two weeks later, all the goodwill, buzz and momentum caused by the Socceroos in Qatar uh, is gone. And I know they weren't responsible for last night, but the week beforehand um, obviously detracted as well. And, and the game's in a bit of a mess right now. Vince, I think look the, the, the first point there is um, th this is a this is a new structure. It's it's been set up uh, only two years ago. The league is is young. It's uh, it's they're they're in their only the second year of, of operating the league. Um, I think there's a lot of learnings they need to take for from what's happened um, over the past week, and particularly what happened um, last night. But I, I I don't think we can go as saying as far as. Um, they're not capable of, of, of running the league. I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, I think we need to support the league because ultimately for Australian football to um, thrive, um, we need a thriving, a, a, a healthy um, sporting and economic top tier league. We need a second tier that will bring in place soon. We need better pathways and we need national teams um, that, that are performing. So there are some things that um, uh, haven't gone well 
this week uh, with the league. And, and my role as the leader of the sport is really to support um, a solution there because we can't have that going forward. Um, I don't think this is a, this, I think this is a league um, issue. And of course, uh, it does um, have some consequences for the rest of the game. But we also need to remember that it's a league. It's not the game. Okay, the game is 2 million people who play week in, week out. Um, it's it's NPL, um, it's it's youth, it's it's uh, grassroots, it's pathways, it's national teams, Matildas, the Socceroos, it, and it's the league. The league is one part of a broader um, ecosystem. And yes, there does need to be some um, some improvement in some of the things that have happened um, over the past days and weeks. It, it is the shop front though, James. And a lot of people today aren't making the distinction between the A-League and the sport. They're seeing a sport. Um, and, th and this is going to have damage beyond the A-League. Um, my, my view that our shop window is our national teams, Vince. Um, now that's debatable. And I know that the, the A-League has traditionally been the, the, the front window. Um, my view is that two strong national team brands in the market um, is actually the shop window for the sport. Now, the A-League plays a very big role in that broader ecosystem. Um, but that, that would be my view. Now, does, does there need to be some repair um, to to the broader sport done absolutely, um, but I think the starting point is the APL talking to the fans and explaining the reasons and the rationale behind their decision. And at some point, you know, okay, peaceful protests like we saw in Central Coast, Wellington, and Newcastle, that's okay because fans can have a view. But again, what we saw last night, we need to stamp out quickly. Thanks, Vince, Damien. Uh, hi, James. Uh, there are two further games to be played at Amy Park today, obviously a, uh, an A-League game and a W-League game. Uh, will there be any extra uh, staff, security, um, monitors, what, what have you? Will there be um, any kind of extra for that? And what is your message to fans who are planning to, to head to those games or who may have uh, decided not to head to those games? So we, we, we've been in touch uh, overnight with the APL uh, around what the plans are for the remaining fixtures of the weekend. Uh, I can say at this point that it is uh, top of the mind for the APL. I do not think there will be any security risks at these particular matches. I think the round um, will, will, will see itself out and we'll look back at it and say, OK, there were peaceful protests uh, across the league this round and, and, and that's OK. But what happened last night in this particular ma match um, is, is highly unacceptable. And I think that will be the same discussion, the way that we'll be looking back over this weekend once we get uh, into the, the, the early days of next week. Thanks, Damien. Marco Monteverde. G'day, James. Um, you know, you've worked at FIFA in the past. Like, like how do you think they're going to see this? Like, I know the question before was about the women's world cup and the effect on that i mean but with that with that with that coming up how are they going to see this and like how will it affect australia's hopes of of hosting future like tournaments because you know like crowd violence is you know we don't sort of want that um look for, first of all marco i'm in touch with fifa uh, and afc as well um we we, we made those communications uh last night as this was all unfolding um Look, th these things happen and they they aren't specific to Australian football and they're not specific to football within sport in, in Australia. Um, people that, that behave like this, um, I don't call them fans and I will not call them fans. Um, what I will say is what's important, I think, for the public, for the community, for FIFA and for AFC is what our response is and what our response is like. And our response is, is very simple. Um, our, there, there is no place in our sport um, for this type of behaviour and those that participated in it will be weeded out and we'll do it very quickly. And I think that will give um, organisations like FIFA the confidence that when these things do happen, um, we're a code and we're a country that can deal with them quickly, swiftly and strongly. Did you have a follow-up, Marco? Uh, no, all good. Thanks, mate. All right, thank you. Joey Lynch. Joey Lynch, followed by Vinesh. Sorry, I had to take myself off mute. Um, 
James, w- one of the discussion points from this week is related to the governance of the APL, specifically the makeup of their board. There was a lot of talk during the unbundling process about an independent board, but we've now seen that power seems to largely sit with five clubs and the other seven clubs don't have a presence on the APL board. Do you think the APL board is fit for purpose? Look, the APL, um, uh, part of its constitution is that they have an independent chair. And I think um, they're going through a a process at the moment. Um, My message and and Football Australia's message to the APL is this needs to be expedited because ultimately um, you need someone who can front um, the, the, I think the media, in addition to, to Danny, who's the CEO, and I think a lot of this um, has fallen on his shoulders, but he needs the support um, of an independent chair, and that shouldn't be uh, one of the club representatives uh, in, in these sorts of circumstances, in my view. So my message, Joey, in, in answer to your question is the sooner the independent chair, which is part of the APL constitution, is appointed, the better. Thanks, Joey. Vinesh, followed by uh, Peter Rolf. Hello, Vinesh, are you there? Okay, we're running out of time, so we'll swiftly move on. Peter Rolf. Oh, hi, thanks again. Um, just in the, touching on the, the goalkeeper again, throwing the, those, those, that footage of um, two flares being thrown to the crowd, would you support immediate suspensions for a player who who does such a thing? Not saying it's his fault, but it's a pretty pretty serious thing. And, and just as an extension of that, will um, if that victory game does go ahead next Sunday, will fans be allowed in the stands? Peter, just um, with 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 Tommy, um, my, my my focus right now is actually on his health because the 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 kid has a, a gash down the side of his face um, with many many stitches. So I'm not thinking about. Um, action against Tommy at the moment. I'm thinking about his health. Um, I'm in touch with him. And as we said, as we go through the process, um, we will look at every individual that was involved in it um, and we will apply it objectively and fairly against the rules. But right now, um, we're focused on Tommy's health and that's it. That's fair enough, but it was a pretty dangerous act. You'd have to admit that. Do you think it was a dangerous act? Uh, Peter, um, I'm just going to reiterate, reiterate what I said. Tommy is in hospital and our focus is on his health. That's it. Okay, we've got time for two final questions before we conclude this press conference. Cam, Wiper. Hi, James. Um, just to touch on your response to Vince's question, um, you said that the national team is the sort of shop front. Um, it is the A League that is the flagship because of the number of players that come through. It's how uh, Australian football fans fall in love with the national team. It's the connection with the players and then the fans. A lot of people are saying that this is Australian football dying. What is your response to them, and how how are you going to get young families back on side who maybe have turned their back on the game because of the incident uh, they've witnessed in the stadium last night? Look, I, I, I want to be clear that the league plays an important role in the broader ecosystem of the sport. Um, and that is consistent with um, the way football is organised all around the world. Um, it is probably inconsistent with how AFL and NRL, which are very local Australian sports, are organised. But the way I see the sport is I see us as a football nation, um, more relevant and more um, connected um, and, and more similarities with how foot, football is organised around the world. And leagues do play a key role, particularly top tier leagues. Um, and, and, and that is a fact. Um, I don't think, though, that a group of individuals um, that participated in unacceptable behaviour in one match last night um, is a reflection of how the broader sport um, is. Okay. We have 2 million people, as I said before, that participate week in, week out. Um, and they're not like this. And it's actually unfair if people were to paint them with the same brush um, as the, the, the small group of people, the 100, 150 odd people that invaded the pitch last night. They need to be the target, not the broader sport. And what we will be doing at Football Australia is we will be targeting 
those individuals and ensuring that they no longer participate in our sport. Thank you. And the final question to Stephen Paletti. Um, hi, James. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time this morning. Um, I've got to be very careful with how I word this question, and I understand you may not be able to answer it. Um, one of the things that we've seen since the APL has taken over is that uh, the W League, the A League Women's, has kind of been, I guess, collateral damage to some of these decisions. You know, we, we heard J uh, Danny Townsend come out and say, you know, we're going to have the Festival of Football, but the A League Women's Grand Final isn't going to be part of that. And we've seen with the way, like, the differences in the crowd protests this weekend from the women's actives groups who weren't even approached by the APL, but the men's groups were. And so I guess, I guess my question is, what's going to be, or if can anything be done by Football Australia to ensure that the women's game is not caught up in collateral damage by, as you put it, um, not fans of men's football who were simply there to cause trouble last night? Um, look, look. I'm not aware of the specifics around um, the A League women's uh, within the, 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 the this um, festival of football in Sydney. I, I don't know enough um, about uh, that decision and, and the vision. That's something that we've got to sit down and speak to the APL about. Um, I will say though that um, the women's game is is thriving in Australian football. Um, I, I can talk on behalf of the Matildas. We've seen. Um, broadcast numbers, attendance, social media engagement, commercial deals at levels that we've never seen before in Australia, both on the men's and women's side. Um, and we're, we're punching well, well above um, our weight uh, globally. So um, we also know that the participation of women across the country at grassroots levels is the fastest growing um, part of our demographic it's growing quicker than any other demographic so i think the women's game in general is absolutely thriving and of course we need the daily women's um, to help uh, facilitate um, that growth what i would say about the daily women's the first things that come to my mind is is they are expanding um, there are more games and that's something that we've asked um, the apl to um, to rectify so there are some i think good things coming out of the apl i, I don't think that they have um, disregarded women's football whatsoever. Um, and anytime we've asked them to uh, get involved and help us um, with pushing the Matildas brand um, uh, around uh, uh, linkages with the Women's World Cup, they've been very receptive and supportive.